Hello, welcome to Soccer Lens TV. I'm Andy Brassel. Now, we'll be looking back at the best of the European action from the weekend, uh, of course, as we always do at this time of the week. Um, you may notice uh, this, a microphone. No, uh, I haven't um, been employed by Grandstand. In fact, it's just to improve uh, your listening pleasure, hopefully, over the next um, seven or eight minutes with a bit of be better quality audio. So we're going to start as we often do in uh, England. And um, we're going to look not at the top of the table this time, but fix our eyes firmly at the bottom, uh, where the relegation battle is hot, hotting up now. It's been very, very difficult um, to predict with any certainty what's going to happen this season, simply because the bottom half of the table has been the most mediocre in living memory. Really, really um, average selection of teams, and um, it's been difficult to pick out three amongst those. But it's starting to take shape now, with a couple of key results over the weekend. Firstly, uh, Wigan beating Burnley in the Lancashire derby at the DW, with a late, late, late goal by uh, Ule Rodiega from a terrific service from uh, Victor Moses. And then, um, back on the south coast, uh, you had Hull, who were 2-1 up under their uh, new manager, Ian Dowie, looking fair set, first away win in nearly a year. But um, with a couple of minute equalised, he's been outstanding. Um, for Portsmouth since he's joined on loan and uh, another terrific goal for, for him. And then Carnu even later um, making it a pointless trip home uh, for the Tigers. And um, it's going to be a very, very difficult blow for them to come back from. Now, um, of course, Portsmouth um, are already um, well adrift at the bottom with the nine points that have been taken off for administration. We can see that here. Um, they're 14 points from safety. Uh, Hull are in there. Uh, Burnley are in there as well, although they've played a game more than Hull. Um, West Ham uh, losing to Arsenal at the weekend, a little unlucky, they created more chances than we would have thought at the Emirates but failed to take advantage of uh, Arsenal being down to 10 men and came away with a 2-0 defeat. A good result for Wolves um, in the West Midlands derby at Aston Villa, uh, drawing 2-2 in that and of course Wigan uh, there at the top, although they have a very poor goal difference. Uh, should they lose up any points, this could count against them quite badly because they have picked up a few uh, thrashings this season. Now there's going to be some important games coming up as well uh, that I want us to have a look at. The first of those comes straight away um, on today or maybe yesterday by the time you watch this um, between uh, West Ham and Wolves at Upton Park and that's really important for West Ham now. Five of their remaining eight games are at home and they've really got to make them count. Some other um, important ones there, another of those West Ham home games is at the start of April against Wigan and um, also we have at the start of May uh, Wigan versus Hull. Of course Hull have um, difficulty in, in uh, regaining their morale after um, this, this late defeat of the weekend but they do have some firepower uh, to come back in Amizaki and Josie Apodore who were just both um, missing uh, this weekend, so that's something for Ian Gary to look forward to. I think West Ham look very vulnerable. Uh, like we were saying with um, at Portsmouth, they've of course um, played pretty well on a number of occasions this season, but not managed to get the results where their performances have uh, merited and um, it's starting to look quite grave for the Hammers. Now, if we look forward to uh, the last game of the season, um, which we have uh, here, final day, um, we, we have some big matches there. So if they're still in it, West Ham uh, will be playing Manchester City, Chelsea against Wigan, uh, Burnley against Spurs and Wolves against Sunderland. Now, I think those top three are particularly pertinent. Of course, Manchester City and Spurs uh, could be in there uh, for the final Champions League spot and Chelsea could still be in there um, with a hope of winning the league title. So uh, that would be worrying if uh, any of those three teams are going into those last matches of the season still needing points to secure their survival. Now, of course, someone with no worries at the moment is uh, Lionel Messi. He's in absolutely sparkling form. Another hat-trick at the weekend, taking him to 25 in the league, uh, um, 34 goals overall. A provider of nine assists just in the league as well. Um, I think we've run out of superlatives for him, so let's not try and think of any more. Uh, let's talk about how his omnipotence allowed even Zlatan Ibrahimovic to score a goal this weekend. That's why he, um, after getting a penalty in the last minute, handed it over to Zlatan to score only his second goal of uh, this calendar year. Now, people have been talking with increasing worry or in increasing gloatingness. Um, depending on their perspective about the uh, current form of Zlatan and the fact that um, his, his, his move and his price tag and the current pressure on him to get it right seems to be weighing very, very heavily 
on his shoulders indeed. Now, um, I think you've got to put it in, into perspective. Of course, he has only scored one goal in the league uh, in open play since uh, the start of December when um, Barcelona beat Deportivo La Coruña. But nevertheless, he has still got 13 in 19 but, um, uh, starts in the league. So we have to put this into some sort of perspective. There's an opportunity for him to do stuff in the Champions League as well with those big matches against Arsenal um, coming up. And what I think is very encouraging from Zlatan's perspective is the way that Pep Guardiola seems to be handling him. We took him out for a meal a couple of weeks ago to um, discuss in a relaxed atmosphere the difficulties that he's going through at the moment and uh, give him a bit of love and support. And I think this is really what Zlatan needs, an arm around the shoulder you can sometimes forget because he's such a, an outwardly confident player with so much faith in his own ability that he does need that. And when he had his worst season in um, uh, the, the main European leagues before, when uh, he was at Juventus in his second season there in 2005-2006. They did win the Scudetto, even though it was later stripped of them. Fabio Capello didn't manage to do what Guardiola was trying to do at the moment. Um, and Zlatan um, didn't, didn't feel that love, didn't feel that support. And it can sometimes be a bit cutthroat behind the scenes at Juventus. And um, he only managed seven league goals this season. So he's already bettered that. There's no uh, question of it being a disastrous season. But the question is, can Guardiola get that extra little bit out of him uh, to make sure he's a decisive player for uh, Barcelona as they go for the league and the Champions League in the last couple of weeks of the season. Now, if we stay in Iberia and um, stay with Barcelona, I suppose, uh, a little transfer story that um, I'm sure we'll be hearing a little more about over the coming uh, weeks and months, that of uh, Frank Ribery and the possibility of him uh, pitching up in Spain. Now, Arjen Robben had his two cents on it over the weekend. Um, he, of course, an ex-Real Madrid player, uh, now at Bayern Munich, and he said, well, if Frank goes, and I really hope he doesn't, he should definitely go to Barcelona and not Real Madrid because the atmosphere is really, really very poor uh, in, the, in the dressing room there. And I, I think this is very interesting. Um, of course, there's a degree of bitterness, I think, we can safely say from Robin because um, he didn't really uh, completely succeed there in, in, in the way he wanted to, in the classic way he wanted to. But nevertheless, it's a widely um, held belief for a lot of coaches and a lot of players that they won't get uh, the best conditions to do their best and um, perform their best uh, at Real Madrid because of um, the various political ructions, um, commercial pressures and uh, divisions in the dressing room. And this is a, not a new story. But nevertheless, I think if Real Madrid are going to consistently uh, attract the very best players and create a balanced, uh, happy and successful team, this is an image that Florentino Pérez and whoever the next trainer will be, because let's face it, Manuel Pellegrini isn't going to be there for much longer, we'll have to rectify. Now if we go over to the west of Iberia, finally, it was the Portuguese League Cup final this weekend, and uh, how the um, boot is on the other foot there. Now, FC Porto have been so uh, successful over the last 10 years or so, but Benfica scored the 100th goal of the season in the week in their Euro Europa League win over Marseille. It's them who's coming to the fore absolutely magnificent attack in football as that statistic would suggest this season and they hammered Porto 3-0 there was talk they wouldn't take it that seriously because they're still in the Europa League and uh, they're, they're trying to keep their title challenge on track in the Portuguese League or well, none of it of course um, a terrible start for Porto uh, the goalkeeper Nuno making a terrible error which allowed uh, Ruben Amorim to open the scoring but Carlos Martins scored an excellent second before Oscar Carlos with their top goal scorer uh, finished it and it's, it's, it's really uh, falling all apart for Porto. Uh, they went out of the Champions League and they were humiliated at Sporting and that practically knocked them out of the title race. It looks like they won't get into the Champions League either and they're only left um, with the Portuguese Cup to play for. Uh, now it's, it's going to be very difficult to see what happens uh, for such a perennially successful club to see how they're going to cope with this kind of failure. The first couple of sides are not good and their captain Bruno Alves, uh, great leader for them. Well, it was a really ratty mood in uh, this League Cup final, uh, picking fights with uh, Cardoso and IMR amongst others and even some supporters. So I think that shows you the sort of disquiet there is at the club at the moment. The fact is this may be the end of an era where they're going to have to maybe change their uh, faithful 4-3-3 style with pretty much all their wingers injured. Mariano um, has succumbed to a long-term knee injury. Uh, Silvestre Varela, who's been so brilliant for them this season, it looks like uh, he's going to be out for the rest of the season too. And Cristiano Rodriguez, the Uruguayan, is injured. Um, so a lot of soul-searching to do in northern Portugal. It'll be interesting to see.